Hi, this is Zach. In this video lecture, I'll be talking about log linear models. So we know that regression, linear regression, works very well when they are, the explanatory variable has a linear effect on the response variable. However, not all explanatory variables have linear effects on the response variable. For example, in this graph of the total confirmed COVID-19 cases by day, you can see that the curve is definitely not linear. In fact, uh, it's something the number of COVID-19 cases are growing exponentially. Here's a quote from the World Health Organization Director General, whose name I don't really know how to pronounce. Um, he said the pandemic is accelerating. It took 67 days for the first reported case to reach the first 100,000, 11 days to reach the second 100,000, and just four days to reach the third 100,000. And here I've tried to illustrate that with 67, 11, and 4. So clearly the growth rate is increasing over time. And as I mentioned, this is an example of something called exponential growth. So let's go through a story to, you know, uh, to keep things more interesting. Not that I'm not already interesting, but you know. Uh, so there's a legend or famous story about wheat and a chessboard. So the inventor of chess asked for a reward from his ruler who really enjoyed playing chess. And this was the reward that he proposed. On the first day, give me one grain of wheat on the first square of the chessboard. On the second day, you double that and give me two grains of wheat on the second square. On the third day, you give me four grains of wheat on the third square, and so on. So there's a pattern, a very simple pattern, where you double the amount on the previous day for the next day. And Basically, the day variable has a multiplicative effect on the number of grains because every increment in day results in twice as many grains. And this results in an exponential growth in the number of grains. And I've plotted that in the graph here. And I've also labeled it with the numbers. And you can see very clear this is a typical exponential growth curve. If you take the log of the number of grains, then you can transform the exponential growth into a straight line. So this is known as a set, the graph on the right is known as a semi-log plot because the y-axis is a, on a log scale, uh, whereas the x-axis is on the regular linear scale. So that's why it's called semi-log. If both axes are on the log both are on log scales, you'll call it a log log a plot. Alright, so now let's go to log linear models. And this is the mathematical notation for a log linear model. It's basically the same as before, except that the y variable is logged before you do the regression on the x variable. And I want to highlight that the log is base e. So this is the so-called natural logarithm. So e is not like an expression of disgust, e, but e is the mathematical constant, which is approximately equal to 2.718 to, you know, blah, 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 and it never ends. Uh, so, and in terms of notation, sometimes you see ln y or ln with the parentheses y or log base e y or just log y. Uh, anyway, just remember that for uh, for this course or for most mathematics, the log is always base e. And if you want to take the inverse and get the the number that you logged, you have to use the exponential function, which in r is exp. So naturally in in R, you can use the log function, and if, if you take the log of 23, you take the exponents again, you get the original number 23 again. So 
in terms of how you interpret a log linear model, uh, the co it's not as straightforward as one unit increase in x is a one unit increase in y. In this case, a one unit increase in x basically multiplies the value of y by the exponential of beta 1. And something similar for c, you have to take exponential of c times beta 1. And that's a bit of, uh, that's because of the rules of how exponential functions work. But I'm not going to go through that, and you can find it yourself if you want to know more detail. All right, let's take a look at an application to the number of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. So, uh, uh, quite recently, on 24th of March, the U.S. President, Donald Trump, said, I would love to have the country opened up and just raring to go by Easter, which is 12th of April. On the same day, the New York Times editorial board wrote, the worst of the pandemic is yet to come. Listen to the medical experts. It's time for a national lockdown. Who is right? Should you lock down or should you not lock down? Well, let's look at the data. Uh, so in this case, if you plot the number of total confirmed COVID-19 cases in the US, uh, it looks like this exponential growth. And you can take the log when, uh, when you plot it, uh, if you plot it on a log scale for the y-axis, then you get more or less a straight line. I mean, it's not exactly, but it's pretty close. Uh, and for our convenience, I'm going to be transforming the dates into an auxiliary variable called day number, uh, which with day number of January 1st equals to 1, and January 2nd is 2, and so on. All right, so to predict the log of the total cases using DNAM, you just write the same. Uh, it looks almost exactly the same as the linear regression models, except that you have to take the log of the y variable instead of just the y variable without the log. And if you look at the output the, using the summary function, you'll notice that the formula has the log as well, but the rest of the output basically looks exactly the same. In this case, we have the coefficients, uh, the, est the, the estimated coefficients, uh, they are all statistically significant, and the R squared is super high, which is not surprising at all, given that the data almost exactly fits into a straight line. All right, so what does the day num coefficient mean? Uh, so basically, if you look at the table, the day num coefficient is 0.286483. And recalling the definition or the, what I explained earlier, basically when you increase the day num by 1, the total number of cases is multiplied by the exponential of 0.2865, which is roughly 1.332. So what this means is there's a roughly 33% daily increase in total cases per day. Yikes. So if you want to predict what's the number of cases that will be in the US on 12th of April, which remember, it's important to Donald Trump because he wants to see the churches packed on Easter. So let's use a, make the prediction using our model. Remember, the log model is a log linear model, not a regular linear regression model. So if you use the predicts function, you'll basically get the log of the total cases, not the total cases. So you have to take the exponential to get what you want, which is the total cases. And the log linear model will predict about 9.6 million cases by 12th April. Double yikes. Okay. So uh, in the US, there are a lot of people, and some people, uh, or particular one particular young person said, you know, if I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. And this was during his spring break in Miami. And now he has become famous, or perhaps infamous, for his um, unusual attitude towards the disease. 
So, uh, so we estimated a log linear model to predict the number of cases of the COVID-19. And the model basically assumes that the growth rate doesn't change over time. And if the people in the US do not change their behavior, probably this is a realistic uh, assumption to make. Of course, if there are changes in their behavior, their growth rate could be increased or reduced. Uh, so for example, many US states such as California and New York have now been on lockdown with residents ordered to stay at home. So the growth rate, the, the model that we predict might not be so accurate if people are vigilant in following these social distancing or lockdown orders and reduce and the rate growth rate of COVID-19 reduces. All right, so let's do a very quick uh, coding demo. All right, so uh, we'll also be loading a package called Lubridate, which helps us to manage dates more easily. This is this code is just for drawing the graphs. I don't think you really need to know about this. Uh, the Lubridate package, there are two functions that I'm using. The, this function ymd basically converts a character string into a date. So for example, it converts this character string into the dates January 1st. Right. And this function, yday, computes the day of the year with the first gen basically being, uh, being 1. All right. So I downloaded some data uh, from this website, which has been very helpful. And I call it arg because obviously it's causing us lots of trouble. All right. This is how I plot the world data, and that's fairly straightforward. This is the USA specific data. And for the regression, I'm going to be only uh, looking at what happens after the 1st of March. All right, so there's some graph plotting. And this is how you do the regression. All right, so notice the log of the y variable against the x variable. And this is what the summary looks like. And if you want to make a prediction, you have to create your new data frame. So I'll call it Easter since the date is basically uh, the 12th of April. And since I'm using the regression on day num, we have to create this day num variable. And when we do the prediction, we have to take an exponential of the prediction and with the new data being the Easter data frame and that and then that gives us what we want. So let me just run that. Run the USA, run the summary, and then create the Easter data frame, which looks like this. Do the prediction. And yes, so the total number of cases would be 9.6 million. All right, so to conclude, a log linear model is appropriate when the explanatory variable has a multiplicative effect on the response variable. And in this, in this case, a one unit increase, for log linear models, a one unit increase in the x variable basically multiplies the value of y by exponential of the coefficient. So that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.